So, hi guys, and welcome back to another PPTV episode. It's me, Beth, your host and social media extraordinaire. And my guest today is Fern Roberts. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Queen of Not Working. Yes. I love That's that. That's my new title now. I really like it. I think it's perfect. <laughs> and it really I'm summarizes. change all of my bios to reflect Do this. It. Queen of Not Working. Yeah. I think it's great. And the reason that it's Queen of Not Working mm -hmm. is what we're all going to be discussing today. And it's about how to turn a business that you're putting so much <clears throat> effort into, into a hands-free one to yep. give you that time and freedom, mm -hmm. which I think is exciting. Yep, absolutely. So before we get started and go into all the topics and bits, can you give us a bit of background on you for anyone who might not know you, who's tuning in? Yes. Like, just a bit about you. Of course. So uh, I'm Fern, I'm from Peterborough. Um, I'm a newer property investor, so I decided... Four years ago, sorry, four years ago, I started contracting as a project manager, um, fell into the job, really enjoyed it for a few years. It took me all over the country. So I've worked in um, Birmingham, Manchester. I lived in Liverpool for a year and a half. And at that point in my life, it was the escape that I needed. Mm -hmm. I never travelled as a student. Uh, I didn't actually go to uni. I just went straight into work. So yeah. since 17, actually 16, I've worked solidly. So I never had that big... Um, escape or uh, active, you know, something in my life. And yeah. um, I, I bumped into a friend at somebody's 80th birthday party mm. in a village hall some, uh, where I used to live. And they sort of said, oh, what do you do for a job again? I was trying to get a job in London at the time. Uh, wasn't working out quite as quick as I'd planned. Yeah. And <clears throat> so they said, oh, do you want a job? You know, come and do this. And I thought, no, never. I need a permanent job. I could not go and do a contract oh my god i need to know how much money i've got i need yeah. to know when i get paid and all these sorts of things anyway she did a really good job of convincing me um so i then went on a sabbatical at work okay uh tried this other job for six months if i didn't like it i could then go back to my old job uh, so i used to work at thomas cook's so i was in travel for a long time uh, worked in e-commerce which i really enjoyed yeah so it was quite difficult to leave um but so far it's been the best decision of my life and it took me about a week of convincing and then I said fine I'll do it but just don't tell me where I'm going what I'm doing until day one so I had to pack a bag she picked me up and we drove to Liverpool walked into a bank and I managed uh <clears throat> it was a web chat project on a huge program I was so overwhelmed and scared and nothing I'd ever done so I did that for a couple of years, uh, moved around to different businesses. I've also mm -hmm. lived in Cheltenham for four months. Um, then my last job was in London, and now I'm working from home 95% of the time for an insurance company. Um, and I enjoy it. It's challenging, mm -hmm. but it's also not sustainable because it's, so, it's really tiring. And I know a lot of jobs are, but having to get a contract. So I look at Birmingham, London, sort of Gloucestershire way, Manchester, Leeds. Uh, you rarely get a job that you're based at home, which I enjoy, but my dog couldn't come with me. So that was a big, <laughs> it was good to have a year and a half away from him because yeah. it's, you know, giving, giving your child to someone else for a year and a half and you can go and have fun. Um, but actually I started to come home more and more and more. So I realised how homesick I was yeah. uh, <clears throat> and I enjoy it, but it's just, it's tiring. You have to pack your bag and, you know, drive somewhere on a Monday, come home on a Thursday mm -hmm. and live in hotels or um, Airbnbs, yeah. which are great. And my Cheltenham stint I did, I took my dog with me. So it was really nice to be back in the country. Um, but it was when I was there, I don't quite know how I got to listen to a webinar, but it was about <laughs> Brexit. It's yeah. something that Rob did. And I thought, I'm just going to listen because I have my own house. I bought it um, 12 years ago. And I always thought, oh, maybe I'll turn it into a rental property. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a few years, still haven't quite done that, but uh, it's in progress. Uh, so I listened to the webinar about Brexit and what impact it would have, yeah. and then somehow ended up in the progressive community. I'm still not sure how any of this <laughs> happened, uh, and then it's just progressed from there. So, bit of a whirlwind then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a bit of a whirlwind. Um, and doing contracting has given me the tools to run a business, mm -hmm. although my brain is my business, so I'm actually being paid for my time. Um, and it, it is very demanding. You're expected to go in and do the job and just be able to coordinate stuff on day one, even yeah. though you have no idea what you're doing or who is who, but you have to look like you know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, 
so it's just really tiring and for me it's got a shelf life um and i'm coming towards the end of it so that's why i thought right what can i do mm -hmm. that will give me the freedom that i basically don't have to work um and that's no joke that <laughs> i really don't want to work because that that's why i'm doing this yeah um so yeah property's what i picked and also i like because not many people do it although mm. it seems thousands of people <laughs> do it but nobody I, not many people i know do it so i quite like to be different. unique yeah 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 very well, unique's probably one of the nicer words i've been called <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was just something a bit challenging and then I uh, joined the community and then I've done a couple of courses yeah. and mentoring and stuff, so yeah. So fully into property now, like property is kind of your exit almost from yes. the insurance and the contracting yep. and bits like that. That yep. is where you see yourself going fully? Absolutely, yeah. I My business plan, well, yeah, say fully, so I might pick and choose contracts to work with. I might do one three month contract. Mm. Um, I'm currently uh, back to back, midway through my second year in the same company, which yeah. is quite unusual. You tend to do nine months and then move on. Um, I might do the odd one. If I need cash flow, mm -hmm. I can go back to contracting any any time because I've got a really good community yeah. there as well. Um, I guess but once difference. I've left, I probably won't want to go back into it because it's you go in and like I said, it's really full throttle yeah. for three months and you walk away exhausted. I guess mm. the difference is if you were to continue doing it, it would be on your terms and your yeah. choice, not because you have to. Exactly. Not to pay the bills or anything yeah. like that. It's, well, no, actually, I enjoy it. This sounds really interesting. I want to go ahead and do it. Yeah. Which yeah. would be like a big game changer. And I think property for most people that's what they want. They want mm. to do property to have the ability to do what they want. Yeah, exactly. It's not because property investing is super exciting. It's because it gives them the freedom, the freedom. to do everything else. Yeah, exactly. And for me, it's it's all about having time back mm -hmm. that um, I've probably never worked so hard in my life as I have the last four years. But then I think, I feel like I can see a light at the end of the tunnel, which is really nice. And it is about giving me time yeah. and not uh, creating another 60 hour a week job yeah. to swap the contract in because otherwise I might as well just stay in contracting because it's really good money mm -hmm. so it would be silly to do that um yeah it's about the flexibility and then maybe doing a few hours here and I'm too yeah. young not to work yeah but I also don't want to work <laughs> so it's a bit of a catch-22 yeah. but it's having a balance like my ideal would be say three days a week and probably 10 till two that's it I know exactly and uh, I know exactly the hours I'm going to work, the days I'm going to yeah. work, how I'm going to do it. So I've got the whole end vision in mind. So yeah, it's progressing. So if we go back to then what you just mentioned there for a second was about leaving a 60 hour a week job mm -hmm. to then do another one, which is what we were talking about just before we came on, was yeah. that most people use property to create freedom but end up in another full time job somehow because they start getting yeah. into the world and then they're doing everything themselves and they can't see a way to get out or like how to make it more hands-free and give them that time. Mm. But that's something that I've seen your posts about recently, which you've been doing a lot of. You want the time. You're making your yeah. business work for you now instead. Yeah, absolutely. I outsource. Um, I think I'm very aware that I can't do everything myself and I am not the right per person to do um, mm. all of it myself. There's people out there that have much better skills time and focus so mm, my attention span can can go amiss sometimes as I'm sure everyone's can so um I think I'm confident enough in myself and know myself well enough to know I'm not the best person to do it and a lot of people um and sometimes rightly so think they can do things better and they probably mm -hmm. can but I'm not ashamed to say I really can't I'm good at coordinating and I feel like that's my project management side coming out, that you get other people to do your work. Mm -hmm. Kind of boss everybody around. And being female, that's brilliant. <laughs> it, you know, I'm doing what... It comes what, natural. Yeah, really, it comes really naturally. Um, so it was about getting the right people in. So I tried my dad to outsource uh, mm -hmm. finding my properties for me. So then I could go and concentrate and just do the viewings and the numbers. Uh, also, uh, I've got a VA on board mm -hmm. to help me do other stuff. And I've just now got um, my friend to help me with social media, which is really good. So I've got the ideas, but it's sometimes the delivery of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll know better than most people that it's a full time job in itself. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and I just I can't be engaged in everything and do everything myself mm -hmm. and create a business that's going to be able to support me to not work and uh, have people working with me. 
So it was really important to start very early in the, in the process. I think it's really important though that right from the start, you know what your strengths and what your weaknesses are. It's not about, oh, I could cut corners, do that myself, but you know that you can't do that job to a level that someone who is an mm. expert in that area can. Yeah. So for instance, you said about hiring someone for your social media. If that's not something that you know really well and know how to get the most from it, you can waste so much time by trying to do it yourself. I end up scrolling all day and actually yeah. doing nothing. <laughs> but it's like hiring someone. Yes, it's an upfront cost, but mm. you're getting a better return. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember speaking to a guy, he does flips in Peterborough as well, and he's a, an estate agent. So yeah. we, we go on viewings a lot. And he said to me, oh, no, if you do all the work in the house yourself, then it's much cheaper and you earn more profit. And I just looked at him thinking, well, one, I have nails, and I'm a little <laughs> bit girly. One, I have nails. Two... You haven't seen my kitchen tiling I did 12 years ago when I first bought the house. Nobody would tile again, you know, and I learned on my house, which I'm now also having to pay for to rent out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing my house up uh, to, to rent. And now I look at some of the work I did and think, what on earth? <laughs> so I saw a really good post on Facebook a couple of months ago about you think it's expensive hiring a professional. And then it's something like you wait until... It goes wrong, and I can't and remember the hire exact... someone to fix it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very good at. I tried tiling. My mum was brilliant at doing all the house stuff. Mm. So I thought, clearly, it's in my DNA. It isn't. I took the old tiles off. There were big dints in the walls, or you know, sticky yeah. out bits. I just tiled straight over them. Oh, okay. So yeah, I know. I mean, it looks okay. You can yeah. get away with it. Um, and they were really nice, expensive stone tiles as well. That I think, oh, maybe not. So I've learned to pay the professionals, and yeah. I. I do that with everything, you know, even getting my nails done. I can do my nails, but they don't look very good, so I'll get someone else to do yeah. it. And, yeah, I'm very good at knowing what my uh, weaknesses are. But I think <laughs> that's brilliant, and it's a lot of what Rob teaches is leverage. Like, yeah. if that is not your expertise, if you're not passionate about it, mm. get someone who is. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, someone could go in and do the job for a day. It might take me six months. And yeah. as another <laughs> example, when I moved back into my house, after, so I finally moved back to Peterborough last March, um, I painted five colours on my living room wall that went then went down to three about a month later, and still over a year later, I still have three stripes on my living room wall because I just thought, well, you know, I quite like the colours as they are, um, but I just haven't got round to deciding to do something. Yeah. Um, so now I've painted three other colours on the opposite wall. I'm getting there. I booked my decorator in. Okay. But to the point of, uh, I'm trialling him to use on flips as well yeah very tactical uh but yeah i just won't end up doing it because i could sit and scroll on social media or exactly it's not something, do something else that you're is that like at the forefront for you it's like no. oh, i'll get round to it and we're the same we have like a room like we've mm. been in our house for a year now and this room is still not done and i'm like <laughs> should probably get that sorted yeah but because it's like there's everything else going on you still have and then the we've had a nice work, summer as well nice summer you want to go, go out. outside you <laughs> want to enjoy it yeah it can be really difficult if you're trying to do everything yourself for anything to get done yeah exactly exactly so that yeah that was i think one of the biggest challenges was in the beginning you think you have to do it all yourself yeah and i went on tash and karen's uh refurbish yeah. boot camp if that's yeah. a technical title um and then it was there all of a sudden had a light bulb moment oh my god my dad is retired sitting in cyprus in the sun having far too much fun <laughs> i can get my dad to do my property research yeah. he's he's turning into one of these keyboard warriors so basically he's on online all day reading every single yeah. item of trashy news i thought what better person to get to do it than my dad perfect um, and i also said i'll pay him a couple of hundred pounds for um doing a like if he finds one and it completes then he'll i'll pay him a bonus yeah. to do it a bit of an incentive but he got bored i don't quite know how or why um so yeah it that was my first outsourcing and it worked well for a while mm -hmm. but then it quickly transpired that i think he he got bored of it and oh you know i'm here i'm enjoying my retirement i'm not <laughs> i'm not having another job just because you yeah. can't do it He's done all the hustling. He, he's done with that now. Although he said to me this week, actually, oh, do you want me to go and look again? I was like, oh, crikey. So said, well, now I've outsourced it to somebody else now, Dad. But, you know, you can have a look if you're bored. So what was that outsourcing process like then? Because for a lot of people, it's a big deal. You're trusting someone with this really impar important part of your business. Mm. And, like, it can be difficult when you haven't built that trust up if you're using an external company or a VA or something like that. 
Yeah. Like, what is that process like for someone starting out? Um, it felt like quite a big risk to start with, and I completely understand why everyone's nervous of it. Even though I've got a VA now, I'm still a little bit nervous of letting certain parts of my business go. Yeah. Um, so I'm using one in the Philippines, and she is really good. She keeps me accountable. But I think the thing I'm struggling with for my property research it's a very different culture. So yeah. what a good refurb looks like to me looks very, very different to her. So it's, it is taking a little bit longer than expected to get to the point where she can identify something that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, so what I didn't anticipate was the training time to do it. Yeah. Um, so it sort of struggled whilst I'm doing this new contract as well. It's really um, tough time-wise. It's probably taken more time out of my diary than I anticipated. Um, so I think you have to think if you're going to do it, um, actually have a proper plan in place. So mm -hmm. I just thought I could go, oh, here you go. This is what I do. Um, go and do it. Yeah. And that's a learning curve because I've never outsourced anything apart from to my dad. But I yeah. did my dad a process map. I did him a document that says um, all of this stuff on it. And he could get it. But he also knows the UK market yeah. really well. Um, so I would consider things like that if you're looking to outsource overseas or in the UK. I know one of my friends, he outsources loads of things, got an SA business, and I was talking to him about it, and he said sometimes you have to be very black and white, you can't mm -hmm. let people be open to decision, which I never considered that. Um, so there's, there's, it's a learning curve for me. Mm -hmm. um, but the process was really quick, actually. Um, I used Catherine Turner's um, site yeah. to do it, and I uh, thought I should listen to some of her podcasts. I never actually got round to it. I shouldn't admit that, really, should I? But um, I... I think I wished I'd have listened to it now because it might have given me some really good nuggets of information. Yeah. Um, and But it's sticking with it. I've made the commitment now and it, it is helping. So she's also going to do my um, uh, like expenses as well. Mm -hmm. So for both companies, she'll be doing my expenses because I just can't keep on top of... I travel a lot for my job. Yeah. So All that's, those receipts, yeah, petrol. <laughs> I'm like, when did I get the train? Where was that yeah. to? Hang on, trying to find the receipt. So... Um, she's going to be doing other stuff for me as well. Yeah. I wanted to initially get her to do the social media side, but I think the learning curve for me was actually I need someone that I don't have to train mm -hmm. particularly. Um, and that's where I then made the decision to outsource social media to someone in the UK. So yeah. it's actually one of my friends. Um, she's much younger than I am. I say much younger. She's a little bit younger than I am. She's grown up in the social media age. She just gets it. Yeah. She's on there more than I am. Just gets and on with it. Yeah. So that was quite an easy process, actually, to then mm -hmm. be able to outsource to her. Um, and, you know, we have to have, like, half-day planning sessions yeah. in once a month. Where We did it yesterday afternoon. I've got content planned to the end of September. I've never been that no, organised in my life. I know. So yeah. now I can go, oh, all I really need to do is viewings and numbers and lots of networking, of course. Yes. In the pub. <laughs> um so I can go do that. I really don't have to do anything. It's great. And that works perfectly. Your business is still running with all these moving parts, but mm -hmm. you're focusing on the bits that you enjoy and can do quite like better yeah. than anyone else. I feel like actually it's lifted a real weight off my shoulders. And I was... Um, so initially the VA overseas, I wanted to do social media and uh, property research mm -hmm. and other bits. And I started to get... You know, you get the nagging sensation that mm, maybe it's not quite the right thing to do. Yeah. And I think, you know... For some things, they're great, but sometimes the, the language barrier could be a bit of an issue um, and it would take time to train, I which I don't have. As well, Catherine Turner, I think she mentioned it in one of her episodes, like, don't use one VA for everything yeah. because they'll get confused, they'll get overwhelmed just like you've yeah, been yeah, yeah. and then they'll need their own VA as a result. Exactly. So it's like, use specific VAs for their specific strengths. Yeah. And I didn't try to do that in the beginning. I tried to have one shoe that fits all. Does it all. But it was only then when we sort of started the first month, no, maybe the second month, actually. So she started with me in May. Um, and now we're getting to a really good place with the finding properties. She mm -hmm. nags me, have you been to see this one? Have you been to see that one? I'm like, oh, God, but no, good, not yet. accountability as well. Exactly. So it's what I need. And um, But there was just... A f they always say trust your gut, and I'm... Absolutely. Even if I can't articulate why, something doesn't feel right. I trust my instinct. And I then, um, the lady who's working with me now, so she's working with my project management mentor, the one who took me contracting. Yeah. I've seen what she's done for her business. And I thought, actually, it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, 
and she picked it up really, really quickly. I sat there and told her the whole process that we do and the formula and um, yeah, she's been able to run with it. And I think it's just such a weight off my shoulders yeah. that oh, really all I now have to do is viewings and networking because it's about balancing your time. And actually I need, and ha need to have time off. Yeah. I don't build a business model where I have to work like we were saying. Yeah, we were just discussing as well how you recently took two whole months off. Yeah, that's or the second time yeah. since. Second time in a year. So I had, uh, last August, I probably ended up having to have nearly two months off. I think I had a sick bug and I just took a long time to recover. Yeah. Um, and then again, I went to April, no, I went to Bali in April <laughs> um, for nearly three weeks. And it sounds an awful thing to say, but the jet lag was an absolute killer. I had it for three weeks. Yeah. My mind wasn't in the game. Um, I had a really good holiday, but we traveled a lot and I really should have just sat on a beach. I know, <laughs> poor me, I know. Um, <laughs> Should have just sat on a beach, read a book, not, you know, just drank cocktails. And yeah. So I just, I struggled when I came home and I couldn't get my mind into it. And maybe after a month, I thought, no, you know what? You need some time off. And I always had a nagging sensation, like I thought I should be doing more. Mm -hmm. So I was beating myself up about it the whole time. And, um, but then I don't know what the turning point was. Some, one day I just went, Pfft you know what, I need more time off. Yeah. And the minute I allowed myself to, I felt better. Um, then I came to the decision of outsourcing to my friend. And it was just, I'm like a different person again. When I had my mentoring sessions with Tash, even she said, are you all right? You know, you're not, you're not yourself. I'm, I'm not very flapping. chatty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm really chatty, but I was just like, yeah, yeah. I just went really quiet and had lost motivation I suppose mm. and because <clears throat> I just started my new project I knew for three months I'd have to focus on that solely yeah but now I'm at the point where actually I can start picking up property and you know I'm here on a what day is it Tuesday, Tuesday. afternoon Shh, don't tell work. Um, so I can now have a bit of a balance between the two because I don't have to do everything so I'm less stressed mm -hmm. even though just as busy um, and the ability to take that time off for your mental well-being like that's yeah. a massive thing like most people in a normal nine-to-five job or if they are doing everything themselves in their property business they don't have that luxury and mm -hmm. everything just piles up <coughs> on top of them so the fact that you've outsourced so much that you can go you know what i need time for me yeah like it's an amazing position to be in yeah exactly and i've even got to the point where if i can't go on any viewings i'll get my friend <coughs> excuse me to I'll get her to go on some viewings um and especially if i'm then traveling with work and there's this I have some really good relationships with um, estate agents and I don't want to then miss it if yeah. I'm going to be away all week or... Um, yeah, it was just... It was really important. And going back to... I worked on my strategy in December. I went to Jackie Tomes's workshop. Yeah. And they really help you to, to nail what it is you want to do. Yeah. Because um, there's so many, like... Uh, there's so many business model or strategies you can choose and... But I know very well, I've had a couple of friends say to me, oh, you need to do rent to rent SA because, you know, it's really good cash flow. Mm -hmm. And I think, oh, yeah, it is. But actually, I don't want to have to relearn a whole new yeah. um, strategy again when I've just spent so long learning and fine tuning what it is I need for from flips and buy to lets that I've got a 10 year business plan, which I think that shocks me most of the time. But other people think oh, I haven't even done a year. So I, I know where it is I'm going, what I need to do, mm -hmm. how I'm going to get there, how much time I'm going to have off. Um, you know, I'm, I've already got my business plan that I'm going to have a month off in summer overseas. I'm going to have a month uh, off in winter overseas so I can go snowboarding. And I've even had to plan long term for when I have a family. So I don't have one yet, but I know all of this information yeah. because the contracting never allowed me to do that. So I'm building it in from the beginning. Everything I did wrong in that project, yeah. <laughs> in, that, in that business, basically, because I'm always chasing my tail, I've now implemented into this one, I which is really important. incredible. Like, that 10-year business plan, it's covering every eventuality, anywhere you see your life potentially going where you want it to go. Yeah. It's available to you because you're putting the systems in place and making it yeah. work. Yeah. Which I think is amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's hard work, so... Um, doing the systems piece especially because sometimes I think I'm not that far forward yet so I don't need half of this but actually I've just got it for later mm -hmm. and you know even process mapping so a lot of my job I do is um you go into a business and things don't work because there's no process maps to articulate yeah. it all well I go and tell people that that's what they've done wrong 
but I actually then have to implement that into my own yeah. business. So I'm being a bit of a stickler for doing it that way. Um, and, you know, if it slows me down in the slightest, I don't mind because I'm going to have this business that I don't really have to work in. Mm -hmm. And that, that's just what's so important to me. Uh, you know, it'll be to raise a family. Yeah. It'll be um, being able to do exercise properly and just have time off and just enjoy freedom, life. isn't it? Yeah. Doing what you want to do with your time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you can't buy time back. Like, your time, like, that's all you have. So I think mm. setting up your business to work around that is the main goal and I think for a lot of people they'll be able to relate to that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I do see a lot of people running around thinking, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that and I've got to try this strategy yeah. and that strategy. And I think, oh, am I doing it wrong because I, <clears throat> excuse me, because I only want to do, so um, with the, the buy to lets, I'm building it on the side. I don't really want to know what goes on mm -hmm. and I don't mean that to how it might sound, but I'll find the money and then hand it over to my saucer. There you go. You do all the magic. Well, that's what we said at the start. Yeah. Like, you're in property for the freedom, not because yeah. you enjoy property. Like, there are bits that are enjoyable, but mm. property is just the means to get you where you want to be. Yeah, it's my product rather yeah. than it, uh, you know, I'm building the business around it and I'm just seeing it as a product, um, which I don't see a lot of people doing. And I can understand why, because you get so engrossed with yeah. it and you just get so into a rhythm. But the thing is, for me, I was running on a high or running to this sort of capacity and all of a sudden I dropped off a cliff. Yeah. And then it made me realise you can't continue to run like this consistently. It's not sustainable. No, not sustainable at all. And that's when I then had the an, another two months off. So I did a lot of my training and uh, one-to-ones and courses last year. And then since then, it was then when I went on holiday and I just thought, I'm, I'm tired. I'm really mentally, like, frazzled. Mm. Um, and it made me look back and go you have to outsource you have to and I kept putting it off because I thought I should be doing it all yeah. I should do this I should do that and you know you're not running your business properly and because mm -hmm. you get you do get looks and people go oh, what do you so what do you do and you think oh I enjoy my life quite a lot but it's actually the business is building on the side yeah. um quite nicely but it's great you've put all this hard work in at the start to make your business run this way so that you're mm. not as you said chasing your tail the business is working for you not the other way around yeah, absolutely. And I think, so with flips, I'll do the first couple of flips. Um, I've already got my friend who I used to work with on point to do my project management. So I'll do it purely because, so for me, I want to be creative and working in an insurance company, you, you don't get to use your creative yeah. side, <laughs> strangely enough. Um, but sh her work ethic, I remember when we started at Thomas Cook's, however many years ago, we had to learn this one thing and it was all it was when we were working in e-commerce so it was all about your metadata and all these other things that she'll know the yeah. answers to um and she said it one day in a meeting i thought oh, how does she know this she said because i learned it i just went oh i don't want to learn it <laughs> i don't and then that just proved to me how good her work ethic yeah. was because you know we were in the same job and it was really tough but she just got on with it so i already know that she will come work in my business in the next couple of years she's got yeah. two young children so I think she'll want to be at home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she'll do project management. She's probably better at coordinating me than I am yeah. sometimes. So she's the right person for me. Also, I'd like to work with a lot of ladies as well. Um, and like I said, she's got her family as well. So she knows yeah. all about managing your time and wanting to spend it with those that you want to spend it with as well. Yeah, and still feeling productive and like you're working. But um, a lot of businesses you go into when you work, you can see people working like to the bone yeah. all the time and so I want to pull one of my good friends out of that to come and work with me and then also I'll help her build her own portfolio because mm -hmm. everyone goes oh how do you do this I'm like well I'll tell you let me get it all sorted in my head and then I'll also help them do yeah. that so that's where I see my time going in future so I'll, when I outsource the project management then I'll um not necessarily mentor but I will then help my friends do what I've done yeah because I know how good the life can be but I like that you're giving back. Like you managed mm. to do it for yourself. You've got what you want. Now it's like, now let me help you do that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They, they've obviously seen your journey from the start as well and where you were in that really mm. stressful job to being like, she's taken a month off to go on holiday. Like, oh, yeah. All they say is, but you're always away. I'm like, no, I'm not away enough, to yeah. be honest. I'm really active. I really like um, sort of surfing, snowboarding. It's like uh, Jackie, sports. Isn't it? Yeah. Every six months she's on holiday, which yeah. is amazing. Exactly. So, um, I think I'd just rather go somewhere and stay a bit longer. And, but you can still work remotely, mm -hmm. and I do that. I should do it more, because even contracting, I could go off to you know, Rome for the weekend. I've been saying this for years. 
Uh, I'm going to go to Rome for the weekend, but part of me feels a bit guilty mm -hmm. because I will be working, but I won't be working. Um, so it's also about them working for myself because I don't have to feel guilty yeah. and I can go and do that I'm and work in a cafe. You. Yeah, so I'd, I'd like to help my friends be able to do that mm. as well. So mm. for anyone who might be watching currently, what would some of the outsourcing tips be? For instance, if they're doing everything themselves right now, what would some of your top tips be to start creating this outsourced business where they can then do what they want to do? Uh, I would say identify what it is you don't particularly like doing. For me, it was searching right move. Yeah. And it's, it's good because you can see so much, but oh my God, you're on there forever. I used to, so this whole property thing started because I used to sit on right move and just look at houses more yeah. so I can live in them. But then I was going on there more and more and more. Um, and then I think, you know, uh, clogs were turning all at the same time. Mm. And I think I was in the community and thinking, do I, don't I? This isn't really a business. Who does this? And, <laughs> but now it's got to the point, I begrudge even opening the app. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm trying to look, I'm also looking on the side for somewhere to live. And I think, oh, I just don't want to do it. So I quickly started to dislike that element of it. Um, because it's like social media, you just scroll and you get yeah. sucked in a Mindlessly, little bit. Mindlessly, isn't it? You don't, you're not even looking at what's there, you're just yeah. scrolling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, and I thought that's the most time consuming bit. Um, I didn't do a matrix, I think I've heard it in one of Rob's books, where you have to like track, track your time yeah. or whatever the technical term is, but track all when you're productive, when you're not productive. Um, and I throw, you, you'd pick out of those which ones you like doing the least. Also, if you know you're not necessarily very good at something, mm -hmm. um, and then start doing it that way, because I just feel like the pressure's off um, because I'm not doing the things I hate. I'll go on to right move now and go, oh, that's a nice house, but I'm looking at you know, mansions yeah. that I'm one day gonna move <laughs> into, or build, or, you know, something yeah. like that. But um, yeah, I'd say, and I'd also say, be very clear on when you want to outsource, have a, have a bit more of a plan than I did, mm -hmm. because I thought that someone could just pick it up and get it. But then I've been through a year's worth of training. Yeah. Well, I should know better, to be honest. I mean, it's what I do for my job. I help implement new training materials and this mm -hmm. thing. I thought, oh, you know, it's not hard. Everyone <laughs> will just get it. So uh, I've been your practice run. Yeah. Actually have a bit of a plan. Make sure you've got time to spend with them when they start. Because I was then, you know, all over traveling again with work. And uh, so it's made it quite difficult. I do feel sorry for my VA. But she's lovely. She's so nice. She cheers, she cheers me up most of the time. And... Yeah, if I say, oh, sorry, I haven't replied to you today, I'm a bit stressed, she always sort of gives me a really nice message. And so it's quite nice just to have a support there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she keeps me accountable as well. So be really prepared for that. Yeah, I think, I think they're my top tips of having a plan and then get, and getting rid of the stuff that you don't want to do. Yeah. Like as much as I love social media, I went on Rob's course last year and I was really fired up for it. And but then life gets in the way mm -hmm. and I know I should do this and I know I should do that. And... Oh, I get nags. Just gets pushed down, yeah, down the list. My it? mentoring sessions, there's always a social media thing on there, and I think, oh, just outsourced it now. Yeah, basically outsourced it, but that was in the plan yeah. uh, to do that. And it's so I can go and work. You know, this, I've done a lot more 11 hour days in this current contract than I've ever done in my life, and mm -hmm. I'm not one for hard working. Five o'clock comes, I'm done. But um, it's, it's really helped. Yeah. And even if you just do it so you can actually have time off and enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't have to go and do other stuff. Probably everyone's going to, that's a bit against the grain. Everyone might, uh, no, but it's actually, a lot of people might disagree. It's really refreshing because you do see so many people and they're constantly working, they're constantly doing the new strategy. When in fact, most people and probably most people watching right now, they just want the freedom. And what you've described, like, I only do the Hi, bits that I like now. I see Laura Muse there. <laughs> Hello. That's what people want, though. So I think, although it might be against the grain, mm -hmm. it's actually what most people are thinking and what their ideal scenario is. Yeah. I do feel guilty a lot because I don't feel like I work enough it, on the property side. But then I also... Then I tell myself, you don't need to because you know where you're going and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I could do so much more networking, which that sort of took a bit of a backseat for a few months as well while I had yeah. time off. And um, But my networking's done in a pub. That is in my strategy yeah. to do that. And I live in a really good... Um, oh, sorry, I socialise in a really good area in the villages that I used to um, live in. So on a Friday night, I'm in the pub most Fridays and everybody's interested. And even building something like that in, it doesn't then feel like work. So I forget that That's I've actually work. done more, you know, you've networked with a few different people this week. And um, 
I do sometimes feel guilty about giving myself time off. Mm -hmm. uh, but at weekends, I sometimes just don't want to do anything. Um, and I think that's really important that if you are tired, yes, push, push and push. But at some point, like last year, I'm pretty sure I had burnout and the sick bug was just uh, uh, good timing to then make me go, do you know yeah. what? You can't do anymore. Um, and it, it does take you a long time to, to get back up to where you were. Mm -hmm. um, so and everybody struggles. I see this all the time. You have to take care of yourself because otherwise you're after what are you working for? Yeah. Why, why are you even doing this? You don't do it to burn to run yourself into the ground. So for me, that's fundamental. Um, and again, sometimes I'm hard on myself because I feel like I use it as an excuse, but mm. I, I know, I'm not, but it's just the way you're conditioned. 100% And you all see everyone else running around doing things. All the way from and, school though, aren't you? You're told you have to work yeah. hard. And actually, no, it, it's what Rob says, work smarter, not harder. Yeah, absolutely. And you shouldn't feel guilty for taking time for yourself, for putting your mental well-being, your health, everything first, because yep. at the end of the day, that's what's most important. Yeah, I remember I put a post on social media recently, and it was about what plat what tools does everyone use to do their scheduling yeah. for social media. And I had one guy that, oh, he was so dramatic. He was <laughs> American, though, so apologies to only Americans. But he said, you know... But if you do that and then your cat gets run over and you don't reply to all these comments on social media, then, oh, my God, you're going to... I don't know. It was just ridiculous. And I thought, the point of me outsourcing my social media is to work smarter and not harder. Mm -hmm. um, but there were quite a few comments like that where everyone's got the mentality that you have to do it all yourself. And yeah. I don't have a business partner. I am doing all of this on my own. Yeah. So, actually... You, you can't do it all on your own unless you're you know a millionaire and you've got all the money even then it might be still you quite still tough you still need help yeah. you still need staff you still need a power team who can help you get that vision created yeah. and when I've got to coordinate all the builders because that'll be fun I'm sure but when I've got to coordinate the builders I don't need to worry about what's going on on social media you know I still do the comments and I, all the ideas are mine sometimes just writing them I can't translate you know sometimes I think I'm not very good at words and it's a bit of a joke amongst my friends but um I can't articulate myself in the best way uh, sometimes. Yeah. Other people can do that better or they get what I mean, but no word it this way. Mm -hmm. So and I think, oh, yeah. So I know all the ideas are mine, so I still get the credit, but... Um, you play into your strengths, and I think yeah. a lot of people see it almost as cheating, but it's not. Oh. You're actually working smarter. You're just getting all your ideas, all your vision. You're putting it down into one place and letting the experts... Yeah. Push it out there. Yeah, one of my good friends, she's a content writer. So again, we used to work together at Tom's Cook and she writes my blog for me, but I give her a huge brief of what I want. She knows me well enough to know how I say things. Yeah. Uh, and I was at a networking event recently and <clears throat> one of the ladies who was on stage, she's also in property as well. She was a mentor for various other things. She um, Agreed with the outsourcing social media, but she said, oh, no, your blogs, you have to write yourself. Well, she was always told that you have to write it yourself. Right. But I thought, why? why is the principle different? Because it's my idea. I sign it off. It's not just going to go onto my website without me checking yeah, it. Yeah, you approve everything first. And I change it. But she's so good at her job, she gets it. She just knows. And I'm like, well, thanks, Sadie. I don't even need to change anything. <laughs> Brilliant. And actually, she, yeah, it's... It just makes my life easier and I've still got a presence that I'm building and it's, you know, it's all coming out of my, my mind, mm -hmm. but there's only so much stuff I can keep in my mind. So, and I get frustrated with myself because I can't always, um, not articulate myself the right way, but like on social media thing, I know I've got to write a post, but ooh, I don't know what to write. How do I write it? Am I saying the right thing? Am I doing this? Am I doing so that? You get so wrapped up, don't you, in the cycle and then for someone yeah. else who knows exactly how it's going to work, they can just push it all out there for you. Yeah. And then it's done and you don't have to worry. You can just see, oh, OK. They take the pressure off. Post. And actually, then I think, um, what, is there a term that you start doubting yourself a little bit and then you think, I'm not good enough to do mm -hmm. this and oh, imposter syndrome. Yeah. But actually, if someone else takes the responsibility off you, well, they're kind of keeping you accountable to doing it all. Yeah. So then I can... They're you know, just hitting the button. Yeah. But everything is all still being done by yourself. Like you said, it's your yeah. ideas and everything. And then I still reply to all the comments and, um, you know, engage with people. Uh, and yeah, so it's helped. And actually this week I've had a couple of people ask me, um, I've done some posts recently, I was supposed to do a few more, I forgot. But um, on my first year and all the challenges mm -hmm. I faced and I've had three newer property investors come up to me like, oh my God, can I talk to you? You make it all sound really easy, like I'm really honest. So it allows me to do the other stuff, like giving back. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been really nice to see that that's actually happened. 
Oh, I've yeah. seen all your posts as well, and you have been explaining your journey, and that's how we got to talking about getting you yeah. on the show as well. So putting yourself out there on these places, mm. on social media and everything, it is really important. And like you say, if you haven't got the time, if you're not sure what you're doing, use an expert in any yeah. area of your business and just get that ball rolling. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's then for me, Nat, picking who or what to outsource next. So as I said, I've um, outsourced my buy-to-let portfolio uh, which is, I don't really want to say, I don't like to give secrets You don't away. have to say. It's West. Okay. I didn't go North, it's West. It's West. But um, <laughs> I am working with this saucer. It took me a while to pick a saucer. Um, I've got a very specific criteria. I want BRR. Mm-hmm. And I then spoke to a few really good sources. They were really, you know, um, good at answering all my questions. I then got them to send me their deals that have completed so I can analyse them. Yeah. That's how I then picked my saucer because they could deliver. Um, I've got a bit of a sliding scale and it's taken mm. me all this time to nail what will work and what won't. So I've now got this sliding scale and he can deliver to that. And he, if, if it doesn't fit that, he won't even contact me yeah. to say, um, we've got this one, it'll probably work. Um, and actually we're, we're going through a refurb at the minute and this is our first project together. And you know, it's about building a relationship. Mm-hmm. And I want to buy four minimum property by to let's a year. So I need somebody else to do that. You need someone you can depend on as I well. I tried to do it. So I tried to go look at Grimsby, actually, to start with. And travelling is quite a direct route from Peterborough, so it was quite easy. But mm. I got so exhausted. And I did that a lot in July, which is then probably why I was so yeah. tired in August. Yeah. So I have tried to do it all myself. I don't, didn't just go out there. And, and I got to the point where thinking, this doesn't work, or I can't make this work. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm not good enough. Um, but yeah, it then took me a while to then basically think, just why are you doing this all yourself? You're not the right person yeah. to do it. You know, outsource it. And I am happy to pay their fee and the project management fee. You know, I've had a few people go, oh, that's an expensive project management fee. I thought, you don't want to know what I charge in a day. So I see, because I do that for my job, I see the value in it. Yeah. Um, whereas like, I understand that other people don't because mm-hmm. it's totally different environment. It's knowing people's worth as well and what you're paying for. Yeah. I just get a nice report every two weeks yeah. and, you know, lots of pictures and videos. I think, oh, brilliant, I'm doing this, but I'm not doing anything. Yeah. It just makes me feel like a bit of a genius sometimes. No, I don't, I don't feel like a genius at all. Um, I'm just savvy because going back to exactly. my why is so important that I actually don't work yeah. much um, or I'll just do the fun stuff. I think that's brilliant. I think the queen of not working sums it up. Yeah, I like that. Perfectly. Um, it makes sound like a doll doster though, doesn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. I just think it's your ideas. It's kind of almost your motto of mm. get someone else to help you do what you want to do. Yeah. What's your why and how to make it happen? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it did take me a while to, to um, figure that out. And as I said, I did my strategy with Jackie, which really then helped because uh, she's brilliant at going on holiday every yeah. six weeks, as we've said already. And I thought, you know, I don't necessarily want to go on holiday every six weeks, but she really keeps me on point. Um, so my two VIP mentors are brilliant because I say two because it's Tasha and Karen. Yeah. They, 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 they come as one. They're a duo. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I've had my mentorship with t- uh, Tasha and they are also in a similar background from I am, uh, both in like project management. Mm-hmm. So they really get how tough the contracting world can yeah. be. So they, they really taught me the technical stuff and helped me progress. And then for, for Jackie, it was actually really key to have my strategy in place because I knew I didn't do that mm-hmm. with contracting. So as I said earlier, I always chase my tail. Um, so I feel like I made a few really good decisions and actually I know exactly where I'm going and what I need to do in the next 10 years. Um, it's just, yeah, now doing them, but it's having the right people on board to, to, to do it all. Which is perfect. Yeah. I think a lot of people are gonna gain a lot of value from that because I think, like I said, they get so wrapped up in doing everything themselves. So I think it's been brilliant to have you in today to explain like, no, no, no. Get the experts to do the bits you don't enjoy, even yeah. if it is just starting with one person and slowly building it mm. up. I think that's a really good tip, and I think your whole journey is going to be really exciting to watch because I know you are posting more and Thank more you. about it. Yes. So definitely look out for Fern's um, posts and everything that's going on. But I've really enjoyed today. <laughs> I have. It wasn't as scary as I thought. No. If you get asked to do it, <laughs> definitely do it. It's definitely not scary, but I. If anyone has any more questions, feel free to pop those in the comments below. And myself or Fern, we'll see if we can answer them. Um, yep. We'll also pop your contact details down there for people if they want to mm. get in touch for more information. Yeah, of course. But um, yeah, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. It's been brilliant. It has. It's quite exciting to hear back at what you do and why you do it. Yeah. And uh, it makes me feel like I am working. 
Is you it? are working. You are, yeah, I it's am. It's a different type of work. It's not work. Like savvy. Yeah, it's not yeah. working like we've been taught to all through the years. It's actually making work work It's, it's almost breaking those uh, foundations that we've been taught. And I seem to have done that really, really well. Just got rid and throw out the rule book of, of stuff and try and do it a different way. Yeah. I think oh, that's yeah. going to be really inspiring for people as well who are scared to then start outsourcing to start leveraging. So I think this will really inspire some people to take that step and start getting maybe a VA just to start with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I say get the right VA because like I said, I yeah. tried to get my VA to do everything. She wasn't the right person to do everything. She's really good at organising me, mm -hmm. my diary, um, my expenses and that kind of stuff. And then specifically social media, um, who can then do viewings. I'll let her do viewings. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just doing little bits, but actually having the right... And then my project management uh, friend who will come on in a couple of years, but that'll be in a few years once I'm kind of full flow into doing flips yeah. and have done a few myself. Because I need to satisfy my lack of job satisfaction. Yeah. Um, Curiosity as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, I'd quite like to do some massive things. So I plan to flip about five or six a year and going from really big uh, houses down yeah. to smaller. So they might even need two of us to do it for a while. Um, and then I can train her. So and you'll have all these options as yeah. a result of like learning how to do it as well. And so if I go and have, have to go and do a contract for something, or I want to go and do a contract, mm -hmm. then I can do it and now I've got some yeah, good people in my there. team that it won't stop and start. Yeah. So and it's I'm, great. You're covering yourself for all eventualities and all the different ways that your life can take. Yeah. I think um, I must have... I went to the... There was a, an event that Jamie York did, um, Money and Mindset, and yes. he was saying basically about building a business rather than another job mm -hmm. and that really stuck in my mind and it, it was when I heard that again I thought oh yeah that's what I'm doing I want to run a business I don't want to work exactly so that's that's so how I shouldn't I'm... feel guilty either. no exactly yeah Which I think is an excellent spot to leave it at I hope you guys have really enjoyed this episode today as well um make sure you get in touch with Fern make sure you watch her journey because it is incredible I'm very excited like I said to see where it's going to go all these projects that are coming up as well mm. I think it's going to be really Thank exciting you. and enjoy all your holidays as well oh yes <laughs> lots and lots of holidays <laughs> <laughs> which is brilliant um but yeah that's it from us today guys so i hope you enjoyed this episode make sure to give fern lots of love in the comments and any questions that you might have add them down there as well bye guys, hey guys bye hi guys hope you enjoyed the episode today thanks for listening if you want to see more like this in future then hit the subscribe button uh, or the notification bell enjoy mm -hmm.